Hey, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vic Malotra. I'm the head of investment banking for Credit Suisse in Asia Pacific. It is my honor to introduce our keynote speaker this afternoon, Jack Ma, founder, chairman, and chief executive officer of Alibaba Group, a global e-commerce leader and the largest e-commerce company in China. As the chairman, chief executive of Alibaba Group, he is responsible for the overall strategy and the focus of the company. Started in 1999 as an online global marketplace providing export marketing services to Chinese SMEs, Alibaba has over the years innovated and developed successful businesses in consumer e-commerce, online payment, cloud computing, and micro lending areas, the full spectrum of the modern world of e-commerce. In the 14 years since it started, Alibaba has become an online joint employing more than 24,000 people in approximately 70 cities globally. Last year, Alibaba's Tmall and Taobao marketplaces, China's two largest online shopping websites, achieved a combined annual transaction volume of over 1 trillion RMB, approximately 157 billion US dollars, with a rec record 3.1 billion in a single day of sales in November. And this is just the beginning. China's internet population today is over half a billion. While that may seem substantial, the penetration rate is only around 40%. There is significant room for growth. Credit Suisse Research expects China's e-commerce business to more than double in the next two years, from about $207 billion in 2012 to more than $500 billion in 2015. Clearly, the e-commerce business in China has developed to a force that no one can afford to ignore. Jack Ma will now discuss how the sector has been generating grassroots economic opportunities and changing lives in China and beyond. He will also discuss the future of e-commerce. As many of you know, earlier this year, Jack decided to step down from the role of Alibaba Group CEO, and from May 2013, will dedicate himself to the role of executive chairman of Alibaba Group. This move will give him an even stronger strategic vantage point from which to guide Alibaba's growth. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome Jack Ma. Thank you very much for the introduction. I think internet really changes people. Um, years ago, five years ago, I never scared of speaking in the public. Now I get a bit worried and scared. Uh, when I was a primary school student, I was so bad at writing. I never write because I talk a lot. But now I start to write because everything I talk, I talk, you know, years ago, I talk whatever I want to say. But today, whatever I say, it caused a lot of problems in China. <laughs> and I feel, always feel nervous in speaking in front of the investors. When I talk to the entrepreneurs, I feel more comfortable because we are the same animals and we are different. <laughs> People keep on asking me what's the difference between China e-commerce and the US e-commerce and what's the difference between Alibaba and Amazon and eBay. And for years I don't know how to answer it and now I know how to answer it. The difference between China e-commerce and the US e-commerce is that the e-commerce in the USA is which I call it is a, dessert, is a dessert. It's just a supplementary to their main business because the USA infrastructure of doing business is so good. So it is very difficult for e-commerce in the USA to grow, to develop, uh, to surpass the traditional business. But in China, because of the infrastructure of commerce is too bad, and e-commerce become the main cause. Just like China Mobile, not because China Mobile did such a great job, because China Telecom was so bad years ago. <laughs> so that made China Mobile grow very fast. And e-commerce in China is the same. And the second, in the USA, e-commerce is online shopping. It's just go shopping. China, e-commerce is a lifestyle. If you go to Amazon, you, want, you go buy things, you buy what exactly you want. You see, this is the thing, I want this. I get 
get it, you feel happy. China on Taobao is different. The things you order may not you get, it may not be the thing you want. <laughs> and people will love it. Oh, gee, it's different. <laughs> people don't like having the surprise, but on Taobao, they give you a surprise almost every day, every morning. Many of my colleagues, they receive probably over 20 packages every day. And they, I ask, why 20 packages? They say the fun of getting things, not the things you want, it's the, the feeling of opening the package. Because every time, you have a different feeling. <laughs> so it's a lifestyle. Um, it's true. I mean, you go to China. If you're using Amazon, eBay model, quality model to, to ask what China uses, you will be shocked. And this is China. A lot of things happen in the USA may not happen in China. And the second, the, uh, the, the US e-commerce is mainly put the traditional business online. And China e-commerce solved the problem of China. That is the job creation and domestic demand. We never know that China grows so fast on the e-commerce. We are one of the uh, small, tiny island in the southern China Ocean Sea. They, they got a lot of orders. They have like in the past or six months, they have a 460% growth in that small, tiny island. And we find a lot of soldiers probably stay there. They, have, they do not have place to buy things. They always order from Taobao. So Taobao go to the second and the third tiers. Every cities that because they don't have the supermarket, they become the main trend of shopping on the local area. And people keep on asking me, what's the difference between Amazon, eBay, and Alibaba? I would say Amazon and eBay, they are e-commerce company. And Alibaba is not an e-commerce company. Alibaba help others to do e-commerce. We do not sell things. And uh, we are not a company that uh, normally China call it. We call ourselves a company running a platform, a company that is running an ecosystem. We are almost everywhere. People say, Jack, you know, you are in the B2B and B2C, and you're calling C2B on the finance and online payment, logistic, cloud computing. You are everywhere. Not because we're greedy, not because we want to do it, because we have to do it. If we, cannot, if we do not do it, China e-commerce in the years will collapse. I remember nine years ago when I started at Alipay, people say, Jack, don't touch the financing sector because it's illegal. You may be in prison. And I, we taught ourselves if we don't do it, the China e-commerce will always like a, like a chat room. Everybody say, it's a good thing, and I don't pay, you don't get the things. So I say, well, put me in the prison. Let's make sure that Alipay, the payment solution, works. And people say the payment solution is such a stupid idea. It's an escrow service. I pay you, hold the money, and you get the things. You pay the money. If you don't get the things you want, return the money. They say it's a stupid product. And I say, as long as it solves the problem, I like stupid things. You know, Let's make stupid things smart. Keep on improving every day. Today, we have over 800 million people registered using Alipay as the account. And Alipay now today solved the e-commerce problem. We are paying the electricity, water bill, and even taxi. And uh, last week, I went to uh, a, a, a vegetable market. Somebody said, we accept Alipay. <laughs> because they say Alipay, with, you know, if they get the force money, and the Alipay can solve that problem. So we are actually building up a e infrastructure of China. And we are building up the platform. And we believe ecosystem. I don't be, we don't believe the empire. In the last century business, when you're big, you call yourself empire. And I don't like the, the idea of empire. Empire, empire means join me or I kill you. <laughs> uh, ecosystem is let's work together, improve the business environment. And we discovered other thing is that the traditional business, because of e-commerce, traditional business is, is having a tough time now. Traditional business, including the, the department store, the supermarket, and they are all facing challenge. A lot of companies say, 
well, funny thing in the world, everybody complain the others where they, they fail. You know, when I fail, it's all the other people's fault. People say because of Taobao, we lose our business. We're getting bad and bad. Unfortunately, they cannot stop this trend. Their business is going to be tougher and tougher. The second industry that's going to face a challenge is traditional B2C e-commerce model, which I call Amazon model. It's going to face a huge challenge. And we believe that uh, putting, it's, it won't work to put the traditional business just purely online. That's not called e-commerce. In the future, business will not make money by the, uh, because of the skill. It's because of the, uh, the value, the different value created. Sk people telling us, well, because our skill is not big enough. When my skill is getting bigger, I'm going to make money. I've checked Amazon. They have $52 billion, and they still do not make money. So skill does not make any sense. And in the future, people will not make money by how many things you sell at one time. People will make money by how many different things you sell at one time. Uh, the traditional thing you want, the same standard and quality skill, but these things will be changed because of e-commerce. And the, second, uh, the third is that in the future, you will not make money, by, make money by the service you offer, you know, how, how good service you, you do. It's going to be how efficient you are. And Alibaba, we, have, we are a company right now have um, 20, does not including the financial uh, group, we have uh, 25 units, 25 different uh, business units. Maybe in the future we, we might have 50, I don't know, right? We have that many uh, units and we are almost in everywhere. We control our head counts by efficiency we have. We only have our 224,000 24, people. I tell you a story, last, the, uh, the thing I feel proud of, the two years ago, we, we started to have a, a budgeting meeting, and uh, I asked my team, well, year 2012, if we really want to double all the numbers we have, how many people we need? And people say, 7,800 new people. And I said, no, 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 check it again. And then they say, 6,800 people, I said, no. And they, my, my people ask me, how many you want? I said, 200. They said, no, impossible, 200. My answer is that for years, we discussed, we should hire more people for future. I've heard this for 10 years. Now, let's, let's, let's just do the efficient thing. And I told all the management, if we have net income, net, you know, had come over 200, even one people, we should have no bonus for whole year, for year 2012. And then we start the, start the plan. Year 2012, we net lose 1,000 people. All the number doubled. And I say, if we want to create more jobs for the others, let's keep our head accounts. Make sure, because Right now, we have over 500 million registered users on Taobao. No matter how many people we hire ourselves, we cannot be, it, always not enough people. So we can focus on technology, focusing on making sure the platform is efficiency, focusing on everybody makes the difference in the platform. That will make the difference. So, and uh, the other things I would say is that the Amazon model I've been looking into, uh, with, with great respect, in years, they were facing challenge because people asking, how you can make money, right? The traditional B2C is that they buy products, they, they, you, they, you, they, good, they have a good service, and they, 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 are, they deliver the product their own, them, themselves, and they're using even their own payment. And things changed. Because of the infrastructure in China we built up, we, sh we believe that, the e that any company should be using the infrastructure, the, like a public tr electricity, public water. Easy to use and more efficiency. So in the past 10 years, we've been focusing on two things, changing, improving the sales channels of e-commerce in China, and second, making sure the consumer feel comfortable about e-commerce. And we've been working on that very hard. 
And as I say, Taobao has over 500 million registered users. Every day we have uh, over 100 million people visiting, shopping on our site. And over 70% of the package delivered in China are all created by our company. And we created direct, indirect jobs for China, over 11 million people. That means over 11 million people work on our platform. So that thing changed the way that e-commerce did. It's impossible that you want, uh, you want to buy a lot of things and sell online using your, your own IT infrastructure, you even using your own invest in your own logistic company. China today, we have delivered people altogether probably less than one million people. And we need, we believe China will have at least eight million people on deliver products. And I don't think nobody can, if you want to cover such a huge land, it's impossible for somebody in China to manage a company that have over one million people. So we have to using the public utility, public service on logistic, on payment, on credit system. Now today, what we are doing is that we are changing the behavior of manufacturing. In the past three months, I think most of the big manufacturers came to us. Years ago, we never talked to a big manufacturer because they think, huh, rubbish, you know, you are too tiny, small, we are good quality, we have a good channels, but today they all change because we create, we sold one trillion IMB last year, that fundamentally changed their thinking. Last year, most of the manufacturers think, if we produce 100 TVs, I only put a five on the online. Today, they think they should have put at least 50 online. So mo many of the manufacturers try to change their way of manufacturing. They, and after this thing changed, I believe the e-commerce will change. And the third, which I believe the next 10 years because of the mobile internet and because of the, uh, of the cloud computing, the e-commerce will grow even much faster. And we invested highly on cloud computing. Not because it is a fancy thing, because this cloud computing, because of the data we collected, can help many, many small, medium-sized companies. I told many people, yes, we did destroy a lot of traditional business. We did not destroy the business, we destroyed traditional thinking. They think that most of the business, when they, started, when they have the competition, the first step they lose is that they, they say, oh, I don't have any competitors. Second step is that, oh, that shit, you know, that's not a competitor. And the third, oh my God, this thing grows so fast. The fourth, they start saying, let's catch up, it's too late. These are four steps that most of company are in trouble. So we check, how many, which step are you in? <laughs> and I've seen a lot of uh, traditional business always try to challenge us. For years, we are considered to be crazy guy, people telling lies, people want to raise more money, people want to IPO. It's okay, people look down upon you, or, you know, as long as the people who support us grow. Alibaba believe one thing, if my customers do not make money, we will never make money. And we believe one thing, that helping the small, always try to help, do not, do not try to help, help successful people. Help those people who want to be successful. The day when we grow up 10 years ago when, when Taobao was founded, it's so difficult to find supplies to sell on Taobao. I remember the day when we launched, the May the 10th. We have seven employees for Taobao. And everybody said, well, let's get four products. Let's get four products. So 24 products should be listed on Taobao. And I'm one of the seven people, I came home looking for things that I can sell on Taobao. <laughs> I only can get a two. So that day I suddenly realized the C2C model won't work at that time. So we gathered 17 products listed on Taobao for the first three days, nobody came to buy. So we have to buy ourselves, he buy me and I have that. <laughs> And the first week later, somebody came to sell. Everything they sold, we bought it. We have a whole room bought, a, a room of garbage. 
And we told people, we really buy if you sell. Today, we have over 1 billion product listings on our site. And that number, we, today we are not getting more numbers. We want to control the numbers. Why China e-commerce grows so fast? We, we never try to convince successful people online. Because when I go to people, I ask that those 40, 60, 40, 50 successful people ask, how many people are you here, uh, top of buyers? Nobody raised hands. I say, that's right. If they raise hands, something wrong with our marketing strategy. We should convince those people who are 20 years old. China, because one child policy. Many years ago, you convinced parents, you convinced children. Today, you convinced your children, you convinced parents. <laughs> so get the kids, get the young people, because they are the trend of the future. So today, you go to school, you go young people, that you see all the young people using Taobao, and they receive tons of packages every day. And one of the ministers came to my office, Jack, I never was shopping online. I'm never using Taobao. I said, sir, it's not a fashion. That's nothing you should be proud of. <laughs> because people will leave you. I'll say, this guy never shopping online. He's not a fashionable, right? He, he, he's the guy who lived in last century. So if you want to be the person living this century and last century, shopping on Taobao. <laughs> the world is changing. And I, I, I always tell many of my friends who are in the business, successful business area, it's so difficult to be back to yesterday. If you do not change yourself, you are not going to have a future. And uh, what we are doing, we want to change China. We're not doing e-commerce. We believe this is the opportunity that this century give us using the technology, using the transparent, open, share a responsibility philosophy that the internet brings. We improve China, and we're focusing on helping improving those young people because they are going to change the world and China. So we do not consider ourselves as an e-commerce company. We consider ourselves a company that improves China, created jobs, demand, and intellectual properties, and everything that we believe we can do by the, by the young people that we gather together. So that's what I want to talk, talk about. And any questions you have, any questions, I'm, I'm ready and happy to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jack, Thank you. for that very compelling speech. Uh, we probably have about five or 10 minutes for some questions. So you know, if uh, you could raise your hand, and I'll point to you. And then uh, please direct the question to Jack. Thanks, Jack, for your very fascinating um, presentation. I have two questions. Uh, one is uh, you had a bet with uh, a traditional shopping mall guru in China, Mr. Wang Jianling, at the end of last year. So if you can have a guess in five years of time that how much of the online sales percentage as a total percentage of retail sales in China will be. The second question is, you mentioned about you more prefer rely on the public facility for uh, money liquidity or for even for the logistics as well. But uh, we, we read from the news line recently, you set up a uh, logistic company with a traditional company in time uh, as well. Um, so what are you thinking behind that, especially you're working with a traditional retail company? Okay. Yeah, I had a bet with the Wang Jianling, and uh, that uh, the, actually he bet on me. Uh, he want to bet with me. I don't, because <laughs> <laughs> to me, I, I never bet if I don't know the result. <laughs> because uh, five years, he, if we, the bet is uh, 10 years later, whether e-commerce will be having 50% of China retails. Today, Alibaba Group alone, have, we, we like 5% uh, of the China uh, total retailer in market in China. And uh, I think in our mind, especially on the mobile internet, there's no online and offline. Everything's online. 
Wang Jianling and uh, those successful business people, they're too far away from internet time. They still think it's a, business, it's a channel. They still think it is a business model. No, it is a lifestyle. Young people are changing. And we think five years, very conceptually, maybe 30%. Yeah, it's we're going. It will go much faster. I told the prime minister that next five years is the golden period of e-commerce of internet in China. Next five years, because 10 years later, I bet, the bet I bet is nobody will talk about e-commerce internet because it's such, it is such a common thing like electricity. Nobody will say electricity is such a high technology. <laughs> and this is what we want to do. We wanted 10 years later, nobody mentioned about e-commerce. Nothing to feel proud of. It's just it's the wheel of your life, right? And uh, I work with the traditional business. I, ne I never hate them. I love them, you know? They, they have money, and they want to do it. And why not, right? <clears throat> I work, do not want to build up our own logistics system. China today, they're probably five years ago. I remember, yeah, five years ago, I went to the China uh, post office, post op bureau, and I say, Let, let's work on together for delivery system. They have 80,000 uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, share house all, all of China, and uh, we work. It's not efficiency because they were beautiful last century. And then in the past five years, we, we have this, the, 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 the private sectors. There are five private companies deliver products. Today, the five companies, they probably have uh, 60 or 70 percent of deliver business, logistic business in China. They grow so fast. The miracle they made is on November the 11th, Alibaba made over $3 billion sales for one day. That's a miracle. The miracle is that that day, over 78 million packages need to be delivered in November, winter time. And these five companies, they achieved it. I asked these guys, how could you do it? Because normally their bandwidth is only two, 20 million packages. That day, 78 million packages. They say, we call anybody. Anybody can walk, help us to deliver. <laughs> and that's the hope of China e-commerce. That's the hope of China private sectors, not the SOE. I think it's very difficult to convince SOE guys to work that hard, right? And that's the future of China. And what we want to do, we do not want high more people to deliver, deliver products. We should help those five companies, making sure they should not spend on money on buying land negotiating with the government. They should focus on improving their services, hiring and training good people and develop. China should have maybe another three companies bigger than UPS and Federal Express. So, we work with the traditional business. We invest heavily on that. We want to build up an infrastructure that 24 hours, any place you order online, within 24 hours, you will get the products. And we, are not, we do not want high one million people. We want high nobody and facilitate these people to do it. That's our dream. And we just started. It's a, I, I hope to retire, but that thing probably will make me not retire for another 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> But it's a fun. Yeah. One question, please. <clears throat> Over there, please. Yeah, please go ahead. Hi. Um, a lot of internet companies uh, in China have gone public in the U.S. and in Hong Kong to a lesser extent. They all have to have this VIE structure. I was wondering if you might be able to take us through your thought process of when you took, Ali, took control of Alipay. And second question is if you have any advice for investors in terms of uh, looking at other internet companies in China uh, and how they might be able to avoid uh, the risk of having a controlling insider taking control of certain assets. Yeah, first, I, uh, I like the question. And as to now, I still don't, know, don't understand the VIE things. Because, uh, um, and later, my CFO Joe told me that what is VIE? And I really love VIE. 
And I think it's a, such a great system that really help China, help e-commerce, help internet. But we should make it transparent. It's not like <laughs> nobody talk about it, but everybody's doing it. It's so many things happen in China, right? Nobody talk it, but everybody is doing that. We want to make sure the VI is, 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 is I, I want this thing is be transparent, it's legal, it's transparent. Everybody take it. For the uh, Alipay issues, if we don't do it, as a CEO, I'm the guy have to p make the tough decisions. <clears throat> Very clear, if you, don't, if you don't disclosure, if you don't do the government say, you will not get the license. If you don't get the license, top or collapsed. And we are at the area that a financial, you know, financial, financial market is such a strictly regulated. It's nothing that my, one of my investors, Jack, you know, China, you know, everything's saying this way, you can do it that way. I said, yeah, but not in the financial market. Not in the company that, that big size. When you have more than one trillion IMB transactions happening every day, one tiny, one tiny thing will make you in trouble. So we've been discussing with the government uh, very clearly. We have, if you want to get license, do what exactly they say. And when we get the license, we try to convince the, the government what's the way we believe right. And uh, I still feel proud for what we did for Alipay. And um, I think the investors will, at the end, they will know why I do this and how we solve the problem later. Because it's never, you should never do, if the CEO like me, if a, a business that size like me, like us, if you do it because for your own interest, you will go nowhere. We are not a public company, but we are, just like a public company, millions of people look at us. I don't want my people walking on the street. People say, this guy steal the company. So I would say people will see the results of Alipay pretty soon, how we solve it, why we do it. And uh, it's, the, it's, not the policy. it's not only the policy you should believe in, it's the people you believe in. I would say my investors, like I've been working with them. Masayoshi san, Yahoo. These guys, we've been working together more for more than 10 years. If we are the people cannot be relied on, we will not be like today. If we do not, if we want to do things for ourselves, Alibaba Group will never grow that fast. And I would like, I would like to find a person that still his, the products if I invest $50 million, and he can bring me over $30 billion, I would, I would trust that guy. But in China, everywhere in the world, it's about the people you believe in. And then trust him. At the tough time, he has to make the tough decision. There's, at the tough time, there's no perfect, if there's no perfect decision, but you have to make decision as the CEO. I would fight the CEO if he did not take the decision at that time. It's always sitting down, the chatting, everything's good, and the business is gone. I want the business. That's all the investor want. And he has to make decision. So find the right people. And making sure the right people can prove his ability only at the tough time. And I have to. And good thing is I'm going to retire. I don't have to make the tough time. I can talk <laughs> like investors. Ah, go, cool, do it, right? <laughs> as a CEO, you have to do it. But as a investors, wow, you should do this, you should do that, and you know. <laughs> I will be back to you guys. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that's a joke. Any uh, question, you have? question right here. Uh, what, just one second, he's going to ring the mic. Uh, thank you, Jack, for the brilliant speech. It's very inspiring. I just want to know, uh, because uh, currently e-commerce companies in China still exper experience uh, the um, uh, problem how to monetize the transactions, although they are indeed in large amount. And I, we understand you tried, and also not that smoothly. 
and you mentioned you want your customers to um, earn money, but what if your customers don't want you to earn money? Yeah. If what if my company? Uh, yeah, you mentioned your you want your customers to earn money. Yeah. And but what if your customers uh, don't want you to earn more? Make money, money all right? Yeah. Thank you. Well, guys, I tell you one thing. First, Alibaba is a company that make a lot of money every. I think in the, for Taobao, for 10 years, we never internally have 15 minutes discussing how we make money. I give you my word, and which we promised again and again for like a half year ago. We said we should have a meeting discuss how we make money. Uh, always cancel that meeting because that meeting is not important. <laughs> we are making a lot of money. What we do, if you come to our internal meeting, you will find that all the young pe people say, no, 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 that money is enough. We charge too much, we charge too much. Today, e-commerce company in China, if you do not make money today, it will be very hard for, you, for, for us to imagine you will make money in the future. It's such a wonderful time making money now. And people, a lot of SMEs, small power sellers, they want us to make money. I receive a lot of emails, Jack, please make money. If you don't make money, we are bankrupt because we rely on you. I said, don't worry about us. Don't worry about us. We are making money. I think when we IPO, you will know the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's our competitors do not want us to make money. It's the big, powerful, traditional business to us that want us to make money. I feel guilty if I make too much money because it's against our mission. Our mission is helping small business doing business easier. And this is our mission. We keep on for 13 years and we'll keep on for another 92 years. If this is our belief. We charge a tiny little bit of money can make, because it's the efficiency we are making. So I think making money for Alibaba is not a big problem, but making money for some traditional e-commerce company, which in your mind, like Amazon model, is blah, blah, big problem. It's impossible for you guys to buy things and sell online and using your own IT, using your own logistic system, and say, when well, to a certain size, I'm not going to make money. No, that's, that's a fish story. We told this story 10 years ago. 10 years ago, when we started e-commerce, people say, Jack Ma, this is a crazy guy. He wants to commit a suicide. Let's cross finger and see how he died. <laughs> right? And because the cross finger, we grow. Today, if you, want to, if you want to be a strong internet e-commerce com e company, buy free, buy large size, and you want to commit a suicide, we help you die quickly. We have you know, so many Baidu, Sina, Tencent, and so Alibaba, we are all there. If you want to die, we help you die. <laughs> so it's, things changed. So many big traditional businesses that wake up, the situation changed. It's not like a skill. How big a skill you will, and say, when my skill is big, I can take money. No, we will never give you a chance to have the skill. If we give you the skill, you will not make money. So things changed. Situation changed. The story we told about 10 years ago work, today you tell the same story 10 years ago, no, won't work. The only thing you should believe is help others to be successful. Help your supplier to be successful, help your consumer to benefit, and you squeeze yourself. Yeah, that's what I believe. One last question, perhaps, back there. Thank you so much, Jack. Um, just a quick question regarding uh, uh, mobile internet. As you mentioned, this is one of the most important trends to watch out for going forward. And I uh, just wanted to uh, hear your thoughts on how you're going to grow the mobile internet on Alibaba and uh, maybe on the um, hardware and software side, do you envision yourself partnering with um, some other companies? Thank you. Yeah. I think that uh, mobile internet is going to be very challenged to China internet and to us. Three years ago, we started to prepare for that. And we're using all kinds of ways, but we believe one thing, the cloud computing, the data is, is one of the, the, the basic things you find to win for the mobile. 
and you should hire the, uh, the, the, the great people and partner with the others. And uh, we also invested highly, but we're not that lucky and not the creative, so creative like, uh, like a Tencent for the Weixin, such a powerful thing, right? And I believe in the internet world, it's like, how do you say, Hong Kong Mu Jian? Aircraft carrier, okay, aircraft carrier. If you call, just to take an example, the, the internet company is like an aircraft carrier. Mobile internet are the fighters, <clears throat> the planes on the aircraft carrier. They have to work very well. If a pure mobile internet company, it's just like a pure air, 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 airplane fighter, will never fight very long for this, it's not a strategic. Only they work together smoothly. That company will go good. So today, in China, we see two aircraft carriers. One is Tencent, and the other is Alibaba Group, because we all have the data. We all have. The other one is like a battleship, right? <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. I mean, you know, we never know that the aircraft carrier is better than battleship, right? Different fighting ways. But for us, because we're already that size, so we have to know one thing that how we can develop our own fighters. Maybe it's not, the, it's such a bloody example, I mean, but I just, no. <laughs> People never sell aircraft carriers, but you can buy planes. So merge and acquisition, having more people, new people joining, because a different, in, traditional business people, fill in the internet time because they see internet from traditional business angle. We internet company will, will fill because we see mobile from internet angle. We should look from the other angle. We win on the business, we win the traditional business because we, go, we see the, uh, in, we from the internet angle. So we should see from the mobile ang angles. And uh, I believe next three, five years will be the wonderful, interesting time for mobile internet. And one of the, uh, one of the messages I give to the, our Taobao mobile uh, unit is that destroy Taobao, the, the, ink, the PC Taobao. Do anything you, you can to win them. If, we, if only you know how to revolutionize yourself, you can revolutionize the others. So traditional business always think, well, I have an e-commerce. How can you support me? How can you support my traditional business? Today, what we should do is how we traditional business can support the e-commerce. How internet company can support the, the all the facilities, all the, utility, all the things we have, how can we support our mobile unit to win? So we are working pretty hard on that, and we are confident, but we need some luck. And luck takes time. And luck means, what my luck means, bury good things into your customer's heart. Somebody, someday the, the luck will come. If you think about the customers, if you think about your employees, if you care your investors, the luck will come. And this is what I believe, customer number one, employee number two, shareholder number three. At the critical time, I mean critical time, the CEO always remember who's a customer, who are the people you work together, and who are the people support to you when you need them. And investors, usually, they support you when time is good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you.